and welcome to another episode of Zoom to Adventure. I'm Cole, and today we have uh, the privilege of hosting David Holm, who's the co-owner of the Aggressor Nile Queen, speaking with us today. So let me give you a quick rundown on David. Uh, David has a passion for worldwide travel and exploration. After a 30-year career operating, operating his own hospitality marketing company in South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia, David has spent the past six years as co-owner of several aggressor adventure destinations. David has de helped develop destinations including the Aggressor Nile Queen and the Aggressor Safari Lodge in Sri Lanka, which we will be speaking with him next week, our next Zoom call. So, how are you doing today, David? Uh, doing great, actually, and uh, excited, finally, that uh, Egypt has, has, is going to be opening, uh, reopening again on the 1st of July uh, in a couple of days. And uh, the Aggressor Nile Queen, especially, we have uh, a lot of bookings uh, and a lot of charters in September, October, November. So with Egypt reopening, we're uh, excited about getting going again. Okay, well, great. That is great news. And how's the bookings looking so far? I know you guys have said a lot of... Uh, charters were coming back to back. Is that right? Yes, September, October, November. I think we have around 12 charters back to back. Um, some of them are already full, uh, and some still have some spaces. Okay, well, let's get them. Let's get them booked up today. How about that? We'll try. All right. All right. So share your screen. Let's open up that PowerPoint, please. All right, now we're ready, let's do it. Okay, uh, sorry about that everyone. Um, I'll take it from the top. The first uh, picture on the presentation is the uh, Aggressor Nile Queen um, image uh, floating down the, uh, sailing down the, the Nile. Um, the second one just quickly to catch up, for everyone to catch up, is the images. If everyone is coming to Egypt and going on the, the Nile Queen, most people will fly through Cairo and most people add on two or three days to either at the beginning of their uh, the charter or at the end of their charter to uh, to uh, visit the sites and equity, uh, antiqu antiquities in Cairo. Um, the images uh, or the, the antiquities that you want to see, the sites you want to see in Cairo, are the Giza and Saqqara, Saqqara pyramids. Uh, they're the big ones with the Sphinx. Um, and also the Cairo Museum. As I, I, I think most people picked up, the, uh, currently the old Cairo Museum holds about 30% of total antiquities um, that the, the museum and the Egypt government have. And next year from 2021, the new museum will be open and it is situated, it's huge, it's situated next to the Giza pyramids and uh, it will hold 100% of, uh, what, uh, of all the antiquities that the uh, Egyptian government has gathered over hundreds and hundreds of years um, for visitors to see. Um, the other things to see in Cairo are the uh, Cairo bazaars. And also one of the other most important things is the old Coptic churches. Uh, the oldest one is around about 3 AD. Um, a lot of people like to go and see that as well. Um, uh, the next slide, uh, if, if after you've done Egypt uh, when you first arrive for, the, for, for two days, or if you're coming straight down, you'll arrive in Luxor and you'll be taken straight to the Aggressor Nile Queen. And uh, here you can see the lobby to the Aggressor Nile Queen. You can see it's very, very wide yacht. Um, that's the picture of the lobby and, uh, and our, currently our captain welcoming you to the boat. I'll go to the next slide. Um, the, a little bit about the yacht. A little bit about the yacht. The length is 52 metres, um, about 170 feet for, for anyone in America that works in feet and inches. And the beam is around 65 feet, which uh, gives you or gives us a huge area in the lounge and also very big bedrooms. Uh, we have six deluxe staterooms and two master staterooms, which allow us a total of 16 guests. Also in the main deck, we have the lounge, which is uh, a lounge and a dining room. So we have the ability to have an indoor 
dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if it's if it is really hot in the summertime and and we don't want to eat upstairs. Uh, also, there's the galley and the staff quarters are downstairs uh, downstairs in the main main deck. The upper deck we have a big lounge area and restaurant area with a bar. We also have a jacuzzi and lots and lots of area just to lay back on lounges and watch the Nile pass you by as you cruise from Luxor to Aswan. The next pictures are the main deck. Um, the main pictures there are the uh, deluxe bedroom bedrooms and also the master bedrooms. Again, as you can see, quite large. The bathrooms are also quite large. Um, but probably the, the main thing to, to, be, to be looking at is uh, the big bay windows we have in all the bedrooms. Um, we have blinds, about three different sets of blinds, which allow, depending on whether the sun is coming into the room, to be able to block out some of the sunlight or completely or partially. Or if you look on the lower middle image, you'll see that we have the big bay windows so that you can just open up everything and, 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 and get panoramic views of the Nile and, and the desert mountains and, uh, and the greenery on the side of the Nile. Um, the other things in those images you'll see on both the lobby pictures on the left and right hand lower side is we have a lot of, and it's a unique feature inside the, um, the, the yacht, is we have a lot of black and white images throughout the boat in the rooms. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to do a special agreement with a, a very famous or the, the first professional photographer that was based in Luxor. He started taking pictures uh, in the beginning of the 19th century. So all of the pictures we feature throughout the boat are black and white and all over 100 years old. Um, it really adds to the atmosphere of your trip. And uh, the important thing to, to know is that not only are the pictures over 100 years old, but the negatives are the original negatives, uh, glass negatives. So, um, you know, they used to, I don't know how to explain it, they used to use the old photographs with the the, the, the big explosion to, to, to press the, the negative onto the glass. And we actually, to get the new photographs, we have to take copies of the pictures from the glass negatives, which takes about 10 days. But again, a very unique um, uh, uh, thing on our boat for you to be able to, uh, uh, to see on your trip from Luxor to Aswan. The upper deck, um, you can see a picture there of the upper dining room, dining area and the uh, bar in the middle, top, top middle photograph. And the upper back deck is on the left lower picture, showing you the jacuzzi and the, uh, the beds where you can lay back and relax and watch the, uh, the, the Nile cruise signs. Also a couple of pictures of the boys in the lower left hand corner as they let down the sails of the boat. Uh, the Nile cruise is a sailing boat. Uh, she has no propulsion. We have generators for the lights and the refrigerators and everything else, but we have no propulsion. We have no engines or motors. There's some other pictures of the upper deck from different angles and different time of the day. I'll give you an idea of what it's like on the boat. Um, just to, again, before I go through the, the actual trip, just to show you a, a map and show you uh, what you're in for. You will arrive in Cairo and then fly down to Luxor and then you'll take the trip from Luxor up the Nile against the current. Remember the current runs from Aswan down to Luxor, down to Cairo, and then out into the Mediterranean. So we'll actually, the wind actually goes the other way. It goes from Luxor to Aswan. So we actually sail up from Luxor to Aswan against the current. Uh, and then at the end of the trip at Aswan, you have the ability to finish your trip just in Aswan, or you can, uh, you can, take uh, an additional small excursion to Abu Simbel, uh, which I recommend and, uh, and, and I'm sure that whoever you're talking to in, in, uh, in Agressa, uh, when you're booking a trip, will, will encourage you to also see Abu Simbel, it's spectacular. Before we start the trip, there, just to explain, there are two ways currently to, to see the Nile. Um, on the right hand side, of your screen is the big Nile cruise boats. Uh, they're usually anywhere from two stories to uh, 
two to three storeys up to about five storeys and they carry usually between 75 and 150 people. Again, that's one way to see it. They're motorised boats, um, but they tend to do the trip very quickly, um, usually only four days, three nights. And uh, by doing it uh, through a, a Daha Bay yacht, like the Agressa Nile Queen, um, you get a, a much more intimate trip. Uh, we only have 16 passengers. Uh, we don't have uh, any more than that. And we have one guide for those 16 passengers. So we, we make sure that guide is very intimate and is able to answer all your questions whenever you get off the boat and on the boat regarding your total tour. Um, and at the same time, the most important thing is you're actually doing the trip uh, the same way that Egyptians would travel the Nile um, uh, three, four, 5,000 years ago. They would sail up the Nile with the wind and then they would basically, if they were coming back from the other way, they would just uh, let the, the, the barge go with the current. We don't have any motors on the boat, as I said, we don't have any propulsion. We do have a, a tug. The tug uh, is a support tug and it allows us for docking, helps us with docking. And most importantly, we have an itinerary to keep. And just in case the wind isn't, isn't strong enough, then we use the tug to make sure that we keep to the itinerary. The, the, uh, the six days, five night itinerary. Um, when you arrive in Luxor the first day, you'll uh, uh, be checked in on the boat uh, in the morning. Usually check in is around about 11 o'clock and lunch is around about 12, one o'clock um, where you can get comfortable, refresh yourself, uh, maybe have a shower before lunch and uh, meet all the, uh, the crew. And then you'll have lunch around about one o'clock to two o'clock, and then you will head out and do the uh, your first tour on Luxor's East Bank. This is the Bank of the Living. When Luxor was the capital of Egypt, um, uh, uh, this is where everybody lived. And the temples on that side are, are some of the biggest Luxor and Karnak temples. So you'll get to see both of those temples. Uh, before uh, in the afternoon before coming back to have dinner on the yacht. The yacht, uh, Aggressor Nile Queen, remains uh, in Luxor on the first night. So after having dinner, if you've still got some energy, you can actually get, leave the boat and go tour around Luxor and, and uh, some of the markets there and, and see Luxor at night. The next morning, uh, the boat will still be at Luxor. We don't start the tour yet. Um, and uh, for some people who want to get up earlier than others, uh, you can actually leave very early around three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning and go and uh, catch a hot air balloon on the West Bank and, um, and see, uh, see the West Bank by hot air balloon. Uh, if you're not into getting up too early, then you'll have breakfast on the yacht and actually while you're having breakfast, watch the balloons come up on the West Bank. Um, and, uh, and then after your breakfast, we'll put you in a water taxi or water felucca to take you across uh, from the Aggressor Nile Queen to the West Bank, where you'll then do the West Bank tour, which is the Bank of the Dead, where all the pharaohs um, were buried. Um, you'll see in those sites, you'll see on that morning uh, tour, you'll see Valley of the Kings. Valley of the Queens, uh, the statues of Menon, uh, the Valley of the Nobles. Um, Valley of the Nobles is one of my favourites. It's, it's the, the tombs are much, much smaller than the Valley of the Kings, but, um, and you have to duck your head and, and, uh, and, and sort of squeeze in to see some of the, some of the, the, the tombs because they're quite small. Um, but again, the images inside those uh, Valley of the Noble tombs is, is as if they were were painted yesterday, not necessarily painted three, four thousand years before. You finish that tour around about lunchtime or just before lunch and we put you back in the bus and we, we travel by bus between Luxor to about halfway to Esna where you will rendezvous, rendezvous with the, the uh, Gressa Nile Queen which left early in the morning when you went to go to the West Bank. The support tug will, will meet with the bus and take you on the tug and uh, give you a little bit of a trip around the, the ANQ as she's at full sail, so that you can take pictures of the yacht um, 
she'll probably go around the the, the, the the yacht several times in case you want to take pictures either moving with your video cameras or your still cameras and then you'll get bored back on the boat and you will um, you'll board back on the boat and have lunch uh, after lunch you'll relax and cruise as you go down to Esna uh, you'll go through the lock just before Esna the city of Esna um, which really shows you that you're going to Upper Egypt the lock uh, lifts the, the yacht up around about six to eight meters um, the lock was put in place for extra power in Egypt. Um, sorry, I've got uh, there's an insect in front of the, the screen. After going through the lock, you'll go to Esna City and you'll dock, and then the uh, uh, will take you to the Esna Temple before you reboard and um, have dinner and continue your cruise up the Nile. Day three um, is an important day. Firstly, again, another reason why you should do your trip on the Dahabaya. Um, or the, uh, it's better to do the trip on a, on a, uh, a sailing Dahabaya versus a big cruise boat because the big cruise boats do not stop at El Cab. El Cab is the first stop in the morning. It's a temple. Um, uh, El Cab used to be the... Uh, the capital city of Egypt at some time after uh, Luxor. Um, but more importantly, the temple is basically, that we take you to is about five kilometers from the river. And to get to, the, to that, we put you on a, uh, we put you all on little tuk-tuks and we, uh, we, we take you out there. When you get to the, to the temple, you'll be able to see the outside as the picture on the left-hand side. And also there's some, some great, uh, interior antiquities to look at as well but the most important thing about El Cab is it's the it's it, it, it's the it's it's because we put you on the tuk-tuks and we take you five kilometers inland to show you um, how the Egyptians and the early Egyptians irrigated the Nile uh, up to five kilometers back from the Nile itself on both sides of the river for cultivation so we'll get to show you date uh, uh, date farms, uh, different crops like um, sugarcane and, 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 and other crops. Okay, so again, another uh, it's a, a great stop that you will you, you get to see with our trip, and unfortunately, you don't get to see if you take the bigger boats on the shorter trip. Uh, you'll get back on the boat and have lunch, and in the afternoon, you'll go to the Edfu Temple. Uh, to get to the Edfu Temple, as per the the image I've got on the left hand upper image, uh, you'll see the horse and carts. You'll be taking my horse and cart buggy to the to the temple. And as part of the other three shots, you can see this is a very large temple, um, uh, very old and large temple. Uh, another important uh, uh, Point to, to just to point out to you is the upper right hand image you'll see um, in front of the, the temple um, you'll see some uh, bricks falling uh, sort of crumbling a little bit uh, brick wall that's the Roman um, the Roman um, construction um, that took place anywhere from between uh, 1 BC to about 4 AD so just that image there shows you how well, I mean, how well the, the Pharaoh's construction, which is two, 3,000 uh, BC has, uh, has, has, has remained and how Roman excavation and buildings are just, uh, that, that aren't really old at all compared to, to, the, uh, compared to the, uh, the Pharaoh, the early Pharaoh, construction has, has, has just not lasted, it's just fallen away. Um, I put this slide in because as you're cruising along, you'll, you'll go through long stretches where you'll just have the Nile and uh, vegetation or crops on the side and also the desert mountains. And in other places, you'll come across these small uh, Egyptian villages. And, um, and I put these images in because it's amazing. Some of these villages are still operating as they did hundreds of years ago. They're still getting around with uh, donkey and cart and uh, uh, it's subsistence farming uh, and fishing uh, by that left-hand 
shot on the lower left hand shot um, and it really is uh, especially when you're on the on the sailing boat it's very calm very quiet and and you could be sailing through there as as if you were in an Agatha Christie book a hundred years ago. Day four, after, uh, after the first three days, day four is another important day. And again, another important site that you can only see when you're on the sailing Dahabeus, like the Aggressor Nile Queen. It's the uh, quarry, the Sicilic quarry, big, huge uh, sandstone quarry. Um, when I first went to Egypt, this was my most important question when I was in Cairo and in Luxor and I saw these huge temples and, and some of these sand blocks that were 20 tons in size, is how did they get them, in, how did they mine them, how did they get them in place? Well, by stopping at Sincilla, um, they our guide will explain to you how they were mined, how, how these huge up to 20 tonne blocks were mined and how the Nile used to flood and at certain times of the year, they would then be, these blocks would be put on the barges and as per the Nile Queen, if the barge had a sail, she would sail these blocks up to Luxor and up to Aswan and, 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 and other stops above Sincilla or uh, if the, the blocks were destined for Luxor or Cairo, um, the barge would just basically then, when it was full, float down the river on the Nile cruise with the current. Actually, day four is, is a complete day where you just don't get on the big boats that you get on the, on the Aggressor Nile Queen, because in the afternoon, we allow you to go swimming, uh, which you can't do on the big boats. Um, and uh, in some of, the, some of the times of the year where it's really hot, it's fantastic to go swimming. Uh, like the young guys, you can jump off, jump off the top of the boat or just sort of ease in or walk in from the side of the bank when we, when we bring the boat up against the bank. And the evening is also topped off by something that, again, only the small Daha Bayers do. Um, as you can see from the image on the top left-hand side, the Nile can be very wide in areas and it has big islands in the middle. So we put the diabaya, we dock the diabaya on one of these islands and we set up a nice big Bedouin barbecue and we have a big barbecue at night and the crew um, put on music and dancing for all the guests. Uh, it's not your traditional uh, Egyptian mu mu Muslim music. It is more what they call Nubian, uh, Sudanese, Ethiopian and African type music, um, which really gets everybody up and dancing. Um, now, day five, uh, you'll start with a visit to the Kombo um, Temple, which houses the um, which houses the the temple there, and also, most importantly, the crocodile uh, mummification um, museum. Uh, from currently in modern day, from uh, Aswan to Cairo, there are no non crocodile crocodiles left in the Nile. But from the high dam, from Aswan all the way to Sudan, um, there are lots and lots and lots of Nile crocodiles still in Egypt. Uh, so at some stage, uh, the Egyptian uh, pharaohs used to um, worship the crocodiles and they mummified them. So it's an interesting museum and an interesting stop. Uh, in the afternoon in day five, um, uh, the, after lunch, you'll we'll continue to cruise down to Aswan and we'll do an afternoon um, uh, uh, excursion to the Philip Island Temple and the unfinished obelisk. Um, the uh, Aswan uh, Phila Island Temple is one of my favourites. Um, it is not just the temple and the island, but actually getting there. Uh, we'll put you on a felucca from Aswan town or city and it will take you uh, a short cruise, it's about 10-15 uh, minutes from Aswan out to the island and it is pitch picturesque, it's very beautiful. You can imagine that when uh, Africans first immigrated, uh, the African people first immigrated up from Africa into the Middle East and the Mediterranean, when they came across Aswan, 
uh, you, you can see, you will, you will be able to see why they chose to have a city in Aswan. It is very, very beautiful, very spectacular. Um, and the other um, monument we go to is the unfinished obelisk. The reason we go to that is that we showed you the sandstone quarries in Sincilla. This is the granite uh, statues, uh, sorry, uh, granite um, quarry where um, uh, there is actually an obelisk uh, that was being um, sculptured um, before it was sort of stopped and, and unfinished. Um, uh, uh, on the last day when you check out on day six in the morning before you leave the A&Q or after, you, after breakfast, um, some people, as I said, uh, choose to just finish their tour in Aswan uh, and others choose to take the, uh, the option to fly down to um, Abu Simbel. Uh, regardless, everybody will still leave, leave together and they will um, uh, visit, the, uh, uh, visit the, the dam and um, the high dam in Aswan. And then some people will stay in Aswan, the other people will fly down to Abu Simbel. And we've got the picture downstairs, uh, down on the, the bottom of, of Abu Simbel. Uh, I put that picture in just to show you the people versus the size of the, of the, uh, the Abu Simbel temple. Uh, this slide shows you both the Ramses and the Nefertari temples. Um, this, this Abu Simbel was created by Ramses uh, it was built uh, halfway between Luxor and Ramses gold mines in Sudan. It's, a, it's apparently, it's about a 45 minute flight from Aswan and it's about 250 kilometers from Abu Simbel to the Sudanese border. Um, two of the important things that I like to point out about Abu Simbel is that um, uh, they're magnificent to see uh, for their historic uh, appreciation, but also for the engineering feat. Uh, these, this temple was actually situated on the Nile and when they dammed the Aswan Dam, they discovered that if they, if they did not move these temples, these temples would have been underwater. So it's one of the 20th century engineering feats that they were able to move not only the temples, but the whole mountain up, uh, away, up high enough so that uh, that uh, they would not be flooded. Um, so definitely worth seeing that. Uh, the other reason I like for everyone to go to see Abu Simbel is when you go into the Abu Simbel or the Ramses um, uh, temple, um, everyone knows the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the movie with um, Indiana Jones. And, uh, and where he goes, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he goes into a, a, a tomb and he puts a staff in the, in the floor and he puts a, a small headpiece on top of the staff. And when the sun comes into the, to the room at a certain time, it lights up the room. Uh, I believe they took that uh, from the Ramses Temple. Inside the Ramses Temple, there is a huge copper I think it's round copper plate uh, disc just inside the room. And on Ramsey's birthday, at the, day, at the time of his birth, it, uh, the, it was built so that the sun would come in, hit that, that huge uh, round uh, bronze or copper um, uh, plate, and then the whole of the interior of the, uh, of the temple lights up. So just a little... Um, a little bit of information for me on that. So that's the end of our uh, presentation. I'll, I'll just finish up with some pictures of some of the other people that have uh, have, have come and uh, and done this trip with us. And um, and now, if anyone has any questions, please uh, uh, you can ask them, and, I, and I'll answer them the best way I can. All right. Thanks, David. That was great. Even better than the pre-recorded. I hope so. <laughs> All right, so let's get to some, to some questions. All right, let's see. For someone with a limited time after the Red Sea Aggressor 3, what tours do you recommend visiting for someone with two days? And how far away are they from the sites that the Nile Queen visits? 
if you don't have the, if you're coming on the Red Sea Aggressor 2 or the Red Sea Aggressor 3, and you do not have, or if you do not have the time to do the full trip, the full uh, six day, five night on the Aggressor Nile Queen, I would still recommend with two days, you can either still do Cairo uh, and do the, uh, the Giza pyramids, uh, the museum and the Sphinx, or you could, uh, you can still go across and do uh, Luxor. At least do Luxor. It's, it's, it's up to you. Luxor in its own can be done in two days. Um, and, or Cairo can be done in two days. And do you have a preference over Cairo or Luxor? Um, well, again, if, 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 you haven't done, if you haven't done Egypt, then if you're coming off the Red Sea Aggressor or the Red Sea Aggressor 2 or 3, I would suggest you do Cairo for the two days and then leave doing Luxor when you can do the six day, five night on the uh, Aggressor Nile Queen because it really is a bucket list trip that okay. you must do. What are the, uh, the, what's the temperature like throughout the, the year there? Uh, surprisingly, um, uh, uh, it, it normally has a very long summer period, but uh, over the last five, six, ten years, the summer has been getting uh, shorter and shorter. But the very high summer period is usually June, July, August and September. And it gets up to maybe 40 degrees in Luxor. Um, and then most of the, the rest of the time around the year, the, the mid times, we're looking around 25 to 30 degrees. And in the winter, it can, can be quite chilly. Um, November, December, January, February, uh, you still have to bring a coat. Okay, good to know. Um, so is Egypt open for the Nile trip and aggressor scuba trips? Can one get there from the USA? So I think he's talking about flights. Oh, flights. Flights, um, uh, you can talk to uh, any of the uh, aggressor um, booking staff and they can update you on all the flights. Most people are coming through, uh, uh, through American flights with, with the European connections and arriving in Cairo or via Turkey sometimes. Most people from, from America. Or if you're coming from the West Coast, you uh, come through, uh, a lot of people come through Hong Kong. Again to Cairo and then down to Luxembourg. Okay, that's right. And I, I just got to note that Egypt Air does open up on the 1st of July. So that's good news from, yes. from New York City. All right. And let's see. All right, David. So if you had to mention, if you had to list your top three things to visit while you're on Nile Queen, what would you list them as? One through three. Well, um, again, Sincilla, I, I love to know, as I said, how, how, how uh, these temples were built, how, how they, how, you know, 5,000 years ago, they were able to move these 20 ton blocks. Um, definitely Luxor, uh, Luxor, both the East and West Bank, and Abu Simbel. And Abu Simbel. Okay. They're my favorites. Okay. Um, we do have one comment that's not a question, but. Um, Alvin Weinberg wanted to say that uh, he appreciates your help um, when everything was closing in March and just wanted to let you know that he's already rebooked for April 3rd and he's excited to come back to Egypt. Terrific. Looking forward to having you. All right. And um, David, I think that's about it. Uh, if anyone has any last minute questions, we can, uh, you can need to type them in right now. Um, so David, let me ask you, I know you might've touched base on this uh, when I was working on the chat box during, but uh, when you guys stopped to take a swim, uh, so what's what's that like? Is the water chilly? Is it? Well, surprisingly, surprisingly, even even when it's 40, 40 degrees in the, in the high summer, the Nile River is is extremely cold, colder than the Red Sea. Really, it's very refreshing. Very refreshing. Is there anything uh, they need to watch out for? Any alligators or anything like that? No, I, as I was saying, the crocodiles, there's no crocodiles between uh, Aswan and Cairo. Uh, any Nile crocodiles still in Egypt are from the high Aswan Dome to Sudan. I'm sure the water is much warmer where those, those guys are at, aren't they? <laughs> Not too um, Let's see, what precautions will be taken for coronavirus? Can you talk about that? Um, like uh, the, the Egyptian government has basically uh, put in uh, a list of uh, inspections that all hotels, uh, yachts, uh, the Nile cruise boats all have to go through an inspection process 
um, Aggressor um, has had all the destinations going through and doing a, uh, a complete cleaning of all the boats and, um, and we'll be doing everything uh, uh, that's necessary to apply and make sure that we, we, we look after all the guests. Uh, as, as with the uh, Aggressor Nile Queen, she's a huge boat with only uh, 16 guests. So there's plenty of room and we're able to, uh, if there is any occupancy issues as far as keeping everyone sort of uh, some space between everybody, social spacing, uh, we have no problems. Great. Well guys, I think that's it. Um, I will go ahead and tell you real quick, the next uh, call we have was, is with David again. And um, David, I think this is the right way to go, is you being in this office that you're in today with this good service. And uh, that call will be on July 8th, which is next Wednesday at one o'clock. And it's not Monday. The 8th? Wednesday, July 8th, Wednesday. one, yeah. Okay, cool. Hope you guys come back and join us. Um, you still wanna show the video here, David? Am I in? Yep. Anyone who wants to stay on and watch the destination video, um, Cole will put it on. I'm gonna put it on right now. It may be a little choppy. If it is, I will shoot you a link to where you can see it um, in the chat box. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, David. Good job. So thank you everybody. If that video was choppy, I just put a link down in there on the chat box. Go to there, learn more about the Nile Queen. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Uh, thanks for joining and David, thanks for presenting today. We appreciate it. No problems. See you next week. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.